Hello and welcome to the Social Media Mixer. My name is Stacy Kenny, and this presentation tonight is brought to you by MyBrandingSystem.com, which I'm very excited to be affiliated with. I'm able to help people with a solution, people just getting started who know they need a web presence, social media marketing and integrating it and streamlining it, just have no idea how to get started, kind of a branding in a box type thing. So that's what we do at MyBrandingSystem.com. Tonight's topic is going to be the importance of search engine marketing. So let's go ahead and jump in here and give you just a little background about search engines. They've been around in one form or another for centuries. The most recognizable one prior to Google, which we all know, was actually called the Library Cataloging System. I think I vaguely remember that. And although there are thousands of search engines today, there are only a few of them which are truly independent, which we know about Google, Yahoo, Bing, Ask. All of the other search engines actually get their results from these search engines and are site specific. Now Yahoo is actually one of the oldest major search directories, but Google is the biggest by far. You know, Google averages over 11 billion searches per month. I mean, that to me is absolutely incredible. Now, interesting enough, YouTube is the number two search engine online with about 3 billion searches per month, and it accounts for 28% of Google's search traffic. So what is SEO SEM? And you probably see this out here a lot, and you're like, what in the world does this mean? I know it means something that could help me and help my website. So let's kind of break it down. SEM is actually, stand, it stands for Search Engine Marketing. It's an umbrella term for paid and for free tactics that are used to raise visibility, excuse me, visibility in search engines. So it's a way for you to get up there higher in the search engine and rank. SEO is called Search Engine Optimization. Now there's a variety of free techniques used to increase web page visibility in search engines. So the goal of SEO and SEM, like I said before, is to rank on the first page of a search engine. You know, that's going to result and attract more traffic. So that's what everybody's looking to do, right? You hear, I want to get on the first page of Google. How do you get on the first page of Google? Well, there are certain things that you need to do with SEO and SEM to achieve that, um, those types of results. The SEO industry began when search engines started indexing the web in the mid-90s. At the time, it was the realm of hobby web, webmasters. You know, today it's actually a multi-million dollar industry with large and small companies dedicated to improving their page visibility. Currently, the SEO industry is shifting directions because of the rise of social media. See, more and more people are actually using these sites like Facebook and Twitter to find more of their information. So they're looking for products and services, not only through Google, but now searching through the social media channels and seeing what their friends are using and what they're recommending. So that's why it's so important to integrate the social media with your online marketing efforts. It's huge what's going on right now. So why should I care? Some people think, what, what does it matter? What does it make a difference to me about this SEO stuff? You know, sounds like a foreign language, right? That's what a lot of people I talk to think about. Well, you know, it's difficult to pinpoint the exact number of pages on the internet because it changes constantly. You know, it's always moving. But the last count recently, there were about 110 million distinct websites online. And the average site had about 50 pages, which means there are at least 5.5 billion pages online. That's a phenomenal amount of uh, information out there. So although social engine search is rising in popularity, traditional search engines are still the first place people go to look for information. So I think most people would agree, and some of you on this call, that you probably go to Google first. You know, honestly, even though as heavy as I am into social media, it wasn't until recently that I started doing some of my searches through those channels because um, I felt like it definitely was a good source and some of a I call crowdsourcing. So I go out and ask for, you know, answers to my problems and I get my network of people to help me out, which is a really cool thing. Now the majority of people do not click beyond the first three pages of a search engine. Now think about it, when you go to Google, 
I mean, to me, I rarely go um, maybe to page two. I don't think I've ever even gone to page three. It just depends on how deep and, you know, really what I'm looking for specifically. If you want to attract targeted traffic to your website, you must rank within those first few pages. I mean, otherwise you're leaving money on the table because your potential clients will not be able to find you. Like I just said, I mean, think about it. How many times have you gone past page one, two, three, four, whatever it is? I mean, I just told you that I haven't done it, so most people don't. So you've got to figure out a way to get up there if you're wanting to be found in the Google searches. So it's all about the keywords. You've probably heard a lot about the SEO. It's absolutely about the keywords. The engine and search engines are the keywords. Keywords are the words or phrases that people use to find information online. Think about it. When you go out there and Google, what do you type in? That's how people are going to find you. So in order to attract that targeted traffic to your website, it's important to use relevant keywords. Now, these are keywords that your target audience uses to find information about the subject that they're in interested in. And not all keywords are the same. Some are research keywords and some are buy keywords. Research words are words people use when they are looking for information. So they tend to be generic or non-specific. So in other words, if you're just kind of looking around like refrigerators, social media marketing, you know, whatever that is, you're just kind of using very vague words because you're just doing a little bit of research. But when you're ready to buy uh, and you're actually going shopping, to spend money, they tend to be more specific. You might say cheap Maytag dryer, you know, search engine consultant. So you're really going to probably uh, use a lot more specific terminology to narrow down what you're looking for. So that's what you want to think about when you are doing some of your articles and things, and we're going to get into that here in a little bit about how to think about the right keywords so that you can target the right kind of traffic to your website. Keyword research basics. Okay, now keyword research starts with your product. So the first thing you have to think about is what are you selling? Okay, and then you have to like pretend you are the buyer, right? Just sit there and think, okay, I'm gonna go into Google. What words would I use? What would somebody use, you know, to find my product, to find me? What, who's that target audience? So you can just sit there and brainstorm and come up with different ideas to see, you know, what, what are those things that people are gonna type in? And strangely enough, your product is not always going to be the exact keyword people use to find the information. Okay, it might be a variation of it and so forth. An example, um, just uh, home-based business opportunities. Let's say for some of those people out there that are, have a home-based business, you know, while that may be a popular keyword, other keywords people use include like work at home, home business, or work online, and there's a lot of different variations. So I definitely recommend that you do some keyword searches. You can use Google's keyword tool. I'm gonna show you a little bit about that. So you can actually go in and see some different variations that you might be able to use and narrow down your search or have a more targeted audience. So a great place to get ideas about keywords is your competition. You know, check out what they're writing, the articles on their site, and then see what keywords seem to be popping up frequently. So that's definitely a good way. Always check out your competition. You can also use um, or view the page source of their website to see what uh, keywords they have listed in their meta tags. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. For those of you who don't know what meta tags are, um, just an HTML code that kind of has the keywords behind the scenes. So we're going to talk about that. There are actually several tools online that can help you evaluate uh, websites for keyword activity. So some examples include SEMrush, Compete, and Keyword Spy. Now these are going to help you to evaluate some of this activity. SEMrush, Compete, Compete, and Keyword Spy. Just wanted to give you a second there to write that down. Okay, so keyword research basics. Now typically, you don't want to try to rank for a singular or generic word. In other words, business. Can you imagine how many searches people put out there for just business? You need to be more specific. Personal development, still not specific enough. You know, it's, it's nearly impossible to rank for that traffic. 
um, it's going to be unfocused and it doesn't convert well at all because you're just competing against tons of people. It could be millions of people searching for that. So you really want to narrow it down. The longer and more specific the keyword, then of course the more targeted the traffic will be. See, that's the mistake I see a lot of people uh, making. They say, oh wow, this has a million hits on this keyword per month. That's the one I need to use. No, wrong. That's exactly the one you don't want to use. You're competing against a million, you know, all that traffic. So you've got to narrow it down. Use tools to see how popular a particular keyword is. Keyword popularity tools include Word Tracker, SEO Book Keyword Tool, and Google Keyword Tool. Most frequently, I tend to use the, the Google Keyword Tool, and here is a screenshot. And I just took an example of video marketing because that's something I'm very um, passionate about. I think video is definitely the way of the future. So I did video marketing, and as you can see here, you know, it has like 1,800, and then you go down. It also gives you some other uh, variations of keywords, internet video marketing, video email marketing, viral video marketing. So it definitely breaks it down and gives you some ideas of other keywords that you can use to be more specific. A little bit more about the keyword uh, basics here um, and expanding on this, you know, typically, as I said before, the less popular the keyword is, then the easier it is to rank for. So when you're starting out, you want to shoot for the keywords that are in the low hundreds. You know, like I said before, video marketing had 1,800 searches per day but look at online marketing here with 280 searches per day. This is gonna be much more targeted, okay, for people that are looking for information on that subject. So you're not gonna to have to compete as much. So anything that you see here in yellow, you know, then that's kind of where you wanna stay. You wanna rank for a variety of keywords associated with your business. However, start with one until you get the hang of SEO and SEM. Like, don't try to be an expert overnight. Just kind of, you know, get your toes wet a little bit, get your foot wet, um, and check it out. You don't have to be an expert in any of this stuff overnight, but just start learning. Start absorbing some of this information so you can become knowledgeable. And thankfully, there's a lot of people out there that you can outsource and have you help with some of these things. But I definitely think it's important for you to have some basic knowledge of these things so that you can hire the right people to help you. Branding with SEO means you want to be associated with a particular keyword set. So when people think of you, they think of the keyword, and your business. Now, here's an example. Stacy Kenny equals personal branding, social media marketing. So that's exactly what I want people to think about when they think Stacy Kenny. They immediately it sums it up. They know what it is that I do. They know how I can help them and help their business. SEO basics. The keywords need to show up on your website and often. However, overall keyword density should not exceed 5%. In other words, you just don't want to go out there and think that you're going to put a keyword in every single sentence, every paragraph, or whatever it is, because it's not going to go over well. It's considered spamming. Search engines will just smack down your website. It's not, not good. So it's, it's, you've got to really kind of space it appropriately, and I'm going to show you an example here in a minute. Your keyword, sh uh, keyword should show up in the title tag of your sites and your articles. Example, Stacey Kenny, personal branding, social media marketing. So you just keep one reiterating that, who you are, branding yourself, and using your keywords. The keyword should be a category or a tag on your blog. Um, so in other words, on um, some categories in my blog, I actually don't have personal branding, but I have branding and social media marketing, but it still fits into that, that realm. And in your articles, you want to try to get your keyword in the first and last paragraph. So if there's anything you can remember at all about article marketing, that is key. Somewhere in the first and last paragraph, and then just kind of sprinkle it throughout. But like I said, don't overdo it. And you can vary the keyword with other um, iterations of it. Um, you find like related keywords, and that will help you rank even better like relevant content as well. So here's an example. I just took a screenshot of just really the first two paragraphs of an article that I wrote called Real Estate Marketing, Sell More Homes by Branding Yourself. So you can see the keywords in the title, real estate marketing, and then branding. So right there in the first paragraph, 
it, I managed to get in branding and real estate marketing. And then even in the second paragraph, real estate marketing. And if you went on to see the rest of this, you could kind of see where it was sprinkled through. Not too crazy, but you definitely have it positioned um, to help you with this keyword ranking. Use keywords in your image descriptions. So I don't know if any of you have ever searched out there, and I do this frequently with some of the little pictures I have here and there um, throughout my presentations. When you're looking for images on Google and uh, you might be looking for a particular pic picture and then it usually uh, goes to somebody's website. So I think it's really important if you can use keywords in those image descriptions because people can even find your website just through um, viewing pictures. So um, some things uh, people don't even think about. You also want to use subheadings in your articles with the keywords and wrap them in header tags h2, h3, h4. Search engines put more weight on words with header tags and it can break up the content into sections. Okay, so this might sound like a bunch of garbly gook for some of you newbies out there, so let me just break it down, explain. So you have a main title, right? That's going to be your, your header. And it, like I showed you in the real estate article that had the keywords in that main header, which would be an h1 or an h2. h2. And then the subheading goes into smaller tags like h3, h4, or h5. And the larger the, the header tag, the more weight or the more importance the search engine gives the words inside of the tag. So this is why your website you know, name and the title should be the H1 tag because it's the more, most important thing in the page. So here's an example. Like for me, visuals says it all because even when I was trying to learn about this the first time, it kind of like, you know, went over my head. This visual did it for me. So even when you're looking in your blog, you can see this. It says like heading one, heading two, heading three. I mean, my gosh, the first time I saw this, I just said, oh, cool, I can make my font bigger. I mean, that, that's what I thought, okay? And that might be some of what you're thinking out there, but here's header one, and here's an example if you see Chinese and Thai cooking classes. Now, header two, it breaks it down, Chinese cooking classes. Three, Chinese recipes, you know, Chinese food preparation. So it still has these, these key words, but the importance, you know, is kind of going down, but it helps as far as the ranking. So I hope this visual makes a little bit of sense to you. Um, and if it doesn't, you know, just keep reviewing this slide and, and looking over it or maybe do some searches on Google, but it's pretty simple just when you're breaking down the different categories and, and using your keywords. Now off-site SEO is just important as on-site SEO. Specifically the links pointing to your website need to be abundant and they need to be optimized. I'm going to talk a little bit about that here in just a minute about backlinks. But the search engines consider links to your website to be a vote for your website and it's it's some of the most relevant um, site about a particular keyword. So in other words, it's just like if your friends are retweeting or sharing things on Facebook, just as if you would vote for something on, on Facebook. Um, anytime that somebody does that and you've got people clicking from different sites and from all over, it really um, does something for the relevance of your, your content and your site. Now this is a primary reason why spammers do what they do because they're trying to improve their search engine rankings at your expense. So I don't know if you've ever seen um, on your site or experiences, if some of you are new you may not have, where people will just come and leave comments and then link back to their site. Like They're trying to go out there and just get tons of links out there on the internet to go back to their site. The links pointing to your site should include your keywords in the anchor text. So what is anchor text? Anchor text is actually what you see here. Have you ever been to a site where you see um, like you're reading an article and you can tell that you can click on it? So if you're reading along in an article and it says social media marketing and you tell that you can click on it, well it's actually uh, stacykinney.com is hidden behind it. So if you were to click on it, then it would take you to stacykinney.com. So this is considered anchor text. So you want to make sure that when you are anchoring uh, back to your site, like to stacykinney.com, that I'm using some of these keywords that are relevant to me and to my blog, social media marketing. That happens to be one of my keywords, right? And you can do different variations of that as well. And that's my next point. You know, try to vary some of the keywords in the anchor text 
that's going to point to your site if you can make your link seem you know as natural as possible so I don't want every time that it's coming back to my site to be Stacy Kenny social media marketing so things that are relevant or in that arena you know attraction marketing social marketing you know just different variations of that to make it seem very natural now getting backlinks this is what I was talking about before now this is interesting if you look up at this picture um, as a visual you know, think of your website or your blog right here in the middle and what you want is you want people or other sites or you want all of this traffic coming from all over the web right that's what creating backlinks can do for you and you can generate these in a number of ways you can post articles to the article directories um, like easing articles um, hub pages that kind of thing and then you have a resource box that links to your website so if somebody's reading the articles or they happen to be checking out things and they come across your article then they see oh Stacy Kinney, Kinney is you know personal branding social media marketing and da 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 and then there's a link they go back to my site and that's usually with the uh, like I showed you using the keyword as the anchor text uh, you can make comments on blogs usually you leave your name plus a keyword so I might say Stacy Kinney social media you know using keywords only will make you look like a spammer so obviously you don't want to do that like I said it's all about looking natural um, you can participate in forums I definitely suggest if you're gonna go out and participate in forums that you find something that is suited to your industry or your field if you're a real estate agent then go find some forums where real estate agents hang out and and talk shop you know place your link and your signature box and that's another way to get people back to your site you could also do guest uh, blogging or post on other people's blogs uh, place your link right in your author bio you can write content that people want to link to exchange links with other people in your industry or even create a giveaway product that links back to your site example maybe you're giving away an ebook so you're linking them back to your site to download the free ebook or your opt-in so that's going to create uh, links back to your site as well you know get interviewed by other people in your industry I see this happening a lot um, where people just interview each other and, and the latest topics whatever it is so your specific field or your industry and maybe you know someone that could do that for you I think testimonials is a, is a huge way too and um, having that network in that community where you're kind of cross promoting one another submit your site to web and blog directories and I'm gonna get a little bit more and explain what that is but it's just all these different ways to get your information out there in different communities, different directories, different sites that can ultimately just continue to drive more and more traffic back to your website, which is the goal. So let's talk about the truth about page rank. Because come on, isn't that what we all hear about? It's like, oh my God, how do I get rank, you know, number one or get on the first page of Google? That's what everybody's trying to do. And that is something that really put Google on the map and it made it the giant that it is today. You know, Google uses over 200 factors to rank web pages. I mean, the number it spits out sits on a scale from one to 10. So the scale represents where the site sits on the first page of Google. In other words, if you're um, page rank of 10, then it sits in number one of the results. I mean, actually, there's a lot of different things that go into it. Think about 200 factors. So there's all these things of how in the world do they get you ranked on the first page. That's why I think people get paid what they do to do SEO work for companies and so forth because it's definitely um, not as simple as social media. You can actually get found in searches through social, uh, social media much quicker and easier than you can on Google and that's why there's a huge shift happening there and why I think it's so important to really understand and learn about social media but when Google introduced the concept of this page rank you know the, all the webmasters out there kind of went nuts you know it was supposed to be a gauge of trustworthiness you know on a particular site but quickly it became a status symbol you know ooh, I'm the first rank on Google or I'm in the first position da, 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 I'm on the first page and I still hear people today it's like they just think wow you know I am the you know what <laughs> but however the search engine giant continued you know to promote it 
But years later, you know, it's funny because Google's really trying to mitigate some of the consequences that occurred because of the page rank. They're trying to downplay it and downplay the importance of it. And I don't know, one has to think. I don't know, Google, you know, their, their marketing campaign, their AdWords or whatever. Oh, no, it's okay to be on page two, three, four, five, six, right? You know, I, I could see why they might do that. But the truth is it's, it's really not important to your success. I mean, as long as you're showing up on those first few pages of the search results for your keywords, then you'll get the traffic that you need to be successful. But I have to say, I mean, as it's become increasingly harder to get on the first couple of pages of Google, that's where social media is a huge advantage for people that know how to use it and work it. Because like I said, you don't have 200 factors of how to do it and how to, to rank. Um, you can be found much easier and get a, a target audience and it's just it's just amazing so I think um, and I'm not saying one way is better than the other I just think that you have to do you know everything so that kind of leads into what we were saying about social media integrating the SEO into social media Google and Bing have started integrating social media into their result pages and you may have seen this I um, mean, it's been pretty recent. Google contracted with Twitter and Bing has partnership with Facebook. So when you go out and, and search on Google, you see some real-time uh, Twitter stream right there on Google for things that you might be searching for. Um, optimizing your social media profiles for search engines is pretty simple. Just want to think about using keywords whenever you can. So when you're using uh, your bio or explanation about you, you definitely want to think about those keywords that kind of sum you up, you know, what you are, what your brand, your message, and be consistent with that across the different channels. Um, which is what I just said. Use them in your bio and your descriptions and, you know, the content that you're linking, linking to. Use them in your twink, uh, <laughs> twinks. Hello. Tweets and use uh, keywords or hashtags. Now, a lot of times on Twitter you see this, you see a little pound sign in social media or pound, you know, save money, pound eco-friendly, whatever it is. Um, I wouldn't say do this on every tweet or every status update, but be conscious, be aware of some of the information that you're putting out there and think about what your keywords are and maybe add some of those uh, to your updates. Because once again, like I said, we're talking it's all about keywords so this is going to be a way for you to optimize your um, social media as well now on LinkedIn instead of using the default anchor text for your links you can change it to uh, keywords uh, make sure you're using keywords in your article titles because they often are the only things that will show when people retweet them or like them on Facebook so in other words when you go and someone shares a post um, you want to make sure your keywords are in the title because that's the only thing that's going to show up. It's going to be that title and then the click to the link, right? So it's not like unless they add something to it, but how do they know what your keywords are? So it's very crucial to put your keywords in the title. Bing shows Facebook content according to how many likes it has. So you definitely want to encourage your followers to like your content. So the more little likes that you get, the more relevant that it will come up in the search engine. And integrating social media tools on your website is definitely going to make that easy and make it easy for people to like and to share and so forth. Now, some definitions, because some of the things that we talked about, you might be like, okay, I'm not really entirely clear here on what she's talking about. Backlinks, you know, like I said, they're pointing to your website from other sites of the internet. I have a feeling that you've probably got that part and as far as targeted traffic you know people that are actually searching for your category product service you know they're more likely to buy or join so you definitely want to target people don't make the mistake of thinking that everybody out there in the whole world wants to buy your product you know that's not the case <laughs> you know so figure out how to really target it down I mean if you are a real estate agent working in a particular area then obviously you want to try to target your local market Maybe you're working or looking for international buyers, so you want to target international buyers. So there's different ways to go about it. Anchor text, which we talked about before, and you saw, here's an example. It's the words that sit inside of a hyperlink. So here's actually what it looks like. Um, this is at the end of one of my articles. It says, just contact me for a free, no-risk consultation. So right there, it's kind of highlighted with a line. If you were to click on it, it would go to my contact me page in my blog. You know, if you want to know what I do works, just Google me and find out why branding yourself is so important. So this is actually how I ended the article for the real estate uh, branding. 
you know, a call to action. That's another thing you want to do, a call to action. Contact me. Hey, I'm here. Let me help you. This is what I do, right? Um, web directories, that was something I mentioned earlier, and I said we'd go into more detail because, like I said, initially when I heard this, I'm like, what in the heck are web directories? So their web directories are places where you can put in category, and you can be general or you can be specialized in directories for your blog or for web, uh, regular websites. So you can actually go to some of these sites that you see here pictured, uh, peaklevel.com, birth.com, a new and um, all of these right here you go there and you actually put yourself into a directory of um, what your blog would fall under you know think about those keywords where are you going to be uh, some of you may have seen some of my past trainings on Twitter it's kind of like that you go out to uh, twello.com and you put yourself in a direct directory you're categor categorizing yourself in these different things where people can find you and so that's simply what you're doing here couple more direct uh, definitions meta tags uh, like I said that's something that um, kind of was like what in the heck is that <laughs> and for those of you that aren't real technical and it's not a huge deal but HTML code that is um, it's read by the search engines it's going to provide the additional information about your website like I said it's almost kind of behind the scenes there's several different kinds including a description tag and a keyword tag the title tag uh, this is the HTML code that tells the search engine what the title of the page is. And the header tags. So these are things that we talked about a little bit earlier. Remember the H1, H2, and all that. It's the HTML code that defines what words are, you know, the headers on the page. And then you've got SERPs, which are search engine results pages. So the pages that display the results of your search query the higher your web pages rank in the SERPs for their chosen keywords, the more traffic you'll, your website will receive. And that's ultimately, ultimately what we want, right? Tips and tools, a few SEO tips. Your search engine marketing campaign should be slow and steady. And let me reiterate that, slow and steady. It's not that you're going to get all this. Some of what I said uh, in this presentation, you're probably going, hmm, I need to go back and watch that. Um, it's something that you just take little baby steps. Like I said, dip your toe in first, toes, foot, that kind of thing. Um, doing too much at once also is going to cause the search engines to flag you as spam. So if you go out there and just go, bam, I'm going to just, you know, do all this stuff and, you know, it's, it's not good. You just want to be slow about it for different reasons, for this reason and just for your own sake of learning and not getting overwhelmed. So organize yourself. Come up with a content and linking schedule that you can do on a regular basis. Anything that you do online in marketing, it's all about consistency. Just think about what is doable for you. You know, once a week you post one article to a blog, two articles to uh, directories. Maybe you make a comment on five different blogs. You know, whatever it is that fits into your schedule, just, you know, kind of try to be consistent about that. SEO changes constantly okay I mean the internet changes constantly right I mean just think about what's happened in the last couple years you know stay on top of what's going on though maybe just find some good SEO leaders or blogs and read a little bit from time to time a search engine watch is a good one you've got SEO Moz and search engine journal so these are just a couple that you might want to write down and that you could stay plugged into and just, you know, you could even probably subscribe to their RSS feed or get it by email. So from time to time, you can just kind of keep up with what's going on. Make sure the theme for your website is SEO compatible. This means that the title tags are in the right places and that there are back-end tools which help you with your SEO. Now, you want to use plugins that also assist in SEO, such as an all-in-one SEO pack. Now, I know with my branding system, we set up a lot of this stuff for you. So even a lot of this technical stuff on the back end, we handle completely for you. Um, a lot of this information tonight is not for that new person <laughs> trying to, to set up and do things. Um, but there's different levels of people that we have on these calls, so we want to make sure that we can uh, get the information for everybody. Now, in summary, the right keywords, positioning, and placement will get you targeted traffic to your website. Creating backlinks will create more traffic to your website and relevance for ranking. 
and of course optimize your social media channels with your keyword and your when you do, when you're doing your uh, status updates as well. SEO and SEM equals higher ranking and can get you on the first page of Google, maybe the second or third page, but that's what you're trying for here is to get found. You want people out there when they're searching for a product, a service, or an opportunity, or whatever it is, a house for sale, you want them to find you. So it's not about just going out there and writing a few cool things on your blog. You actually have to have a little bit of strategy. And, um, and so here's, you know, just be thoughtful and mindful about your keywords. So next week, guys, we've got the burning questions. I want to switch it up a little bit. I am asking everybody on this call, and I already put out some, some information. I had a few people respond. Whatever it is that you want to know about social media, if it's Twitter, if it's Facebook, if it's something you think is silly, it doesn't matter, whether it's about a browser, an iPhone, anything that it is, I want to kind of mix it up next week, make it fun so that there's going to be questions. I've already gotten quite a few questions that are from just all different areas. So you're going to learn some really cool stuff and hear some different feedback next week. You can email me at stacy at stacykinney.com with your burning questions. Um, invite your friends. Ask people, do they, is there something they really want to know about? And I'll try to get to all the questions next week. And of course, I always like to end. And for those of you that are on the call, my quote here is, every step you take in life will leave a lasting impression. And these are some words that I try to live by and strive to be. So when you're building your online presence and your brand, think about who you want to be and how you want to be perceived. Perception is everything. So everything you write online and social media and what you do, it's out there forever. You know, be conscious, be aware of what you're doing. You can always find me at stacykinney.com. And I'm once again excited to be affiliated with mybrandingsystem.com a great system incredible value we do all kinds of training give you a turnkey system help those people that are brand new get started in this world um, and if somebody asked you to get on this call tonight uh, give them a call back and, and find out what you can do to get started to build your online presence and uh, and start plugging in so thank you so much and I look forward to next week with all your burning questions